it is rare for real world data actually follow, follow a very specific trend or behave in an exact linear manner. We need to utilize some graphing technology to help us determine if there is a trend to help us predict future behavior or behavior within our data collection. The table shows the number of cricket chirps in 15 seconds and the air temperature in degrees in Fahrenheit. Plot the data and determine whether the data appears to be linearly related. So in order to do this with Indesmos, I clicked on the plus uh, uh, button in the top left-hand corner of my screen, and then I inserted a table. Within my table, I let my X values represent my chirps and my Y values to represent the temperature. And again, the temperature is in fact in Fahrenheit. So each particular point corresponds to the table. Once I started plotting those points, they started showing up in my graph. Of course, I needed to alter the screen of my graph by clicking on the, uh, the wrench in my settings to alter my X and my Y values so that I could really see all of the data points. I do see that it does appear that it uh, is a positive linear trend as my data points are going, as my X values are getting greater. So as the number of chirps is getting greater, the temperature is also increasing at the same time. So let's see if we can estimate uh, a linear equation that might fit this data. So I'm going to try and sketch a straight line, getting as close to the data points as possible. So about there. I'm gonna show you how we can create this in Desmos as well, so that you get a more exact value. So if I were to estimate this, I could probably use this point up here. We, can, we don't see it, but it is 90 up here. So maybe I use the point 50. 90 and then this point here 0 30 again these are just estimated points that might fit i'm going to show you how we can create that data more efficiently in desmos itself so let's say i have the two points 0 30 and the point 50 at 90 we can create an equation a linear equation because it does appear that it is following a pretty strong linear graph here. I can find my slope by taking the difference in my y values over the difference in my x values. So this gives me 60 over 50, which is about 1.2. So that's our slope. Also one of my points is in fact the y-intercept thus y is equal to 1.2x plus 30. Let's keep this in mind for the next page of notes. When we are predicting a value inside the domain and the range of the data, we call this interpolation. However, if we are predicting values outside the domain in the range of the data, this is what we're calling extrapolation. Would predicting the temperature when crickets are chirping 30 times in 15 seconds be inter or extrapolation? Make the prediction and discuss if it is reasonable. Well, when we look at the table from the previous slide, the number of chirps that we have is between 18 and a half and 44. 30 is in fact in between in the domain. So 30 chirps would be in the domain. So this is interpolation. Since 30 is in the domain. 
and then predict. Well, we'll use the same equation that we found on the first page. We said that the number of chirps uh, could be equal to, or excuse me, the temperature could be equal to the number of chirps. Uh, oops. Okay. So 1.2 times the number of chirps plus 30. So let's see, if I put in 30 for X, the temperature should be about 66 degrees Fahrenheit. When we look back at our previous page, and we try to plot that, that does seem reasonable to the data that's given. So this is reasonable to the information provided. However, would predicting the number of chirps crickets make at 40 degrees, so this is at 40 degrees Fahrenheit, be inter or extrapolation and make a, t um, make a prediction and discuss if reasonable. The temp from the previous page varies between 52 and 80 and a half degrees. Uh, 40 degrees is not inside, so this is uh, 40 degrees is outside the range of data. So this would be extrapolation. We could go ahead and solve. So this time uh, our degrees value is represented by y. Thus, 40 is 1.2 times the number of chirps plus 30. When I subtract 30 from both sides and divide by 1.2, x is about 8.33 degrees Fahrenheit. While this may be possible, We have no reason to believe our model is valid outside of the domain and range. This is what we call model breakdown. So while it does seem reasonable, we don't have any reason to believe our model is valid outside of the domain and range. Again, that's model breakdown, and so we can't really say for sure that will happen Considering if you were to Google some items about crickets, they typically don't chirp under 50 degrees anyways. And so while the model may look correct, we don't have any reason to believe it's correct outside of the domain and range given. So be careful with the information that's given to determine if it's appropriate or not. While well, estimating the line of best fit that we just did on the first page can be useful, we can use technology to create a line that minimizes the difference between the line and the data values as accurately as possible to find this trend. This is called the least squares regression. Find the least squares regression line using our data. So you'll notice above, I still have the same table from the previous page. Just on a new line, I put into Desmos this equation. Y sub one means that it's going to pull the Y values from my table is about equal. So I didn't say equals, I used about m times our x1 value so it knows where to pull the data from plus b. We specifically want to look at the r equals. Notice this number is very close to 1, just slightly under. So this number tells us something. If r is greater than 0, which it is, 
it suggests a positive increasing relationship. If it is less than zero, it suggests a negative decreasing relationship. The closer the value to zero, the more scattered our data is. However, the closer our value is to one or negative one, the least scattered our, our, um, our data is and the stronger the relationship is. So in this particular case, 0 0.9509 is very close to 1. So this suggests a strong linear increasing relationship. Since it's close to 1 and it's positive. Notice what other information it gives us. It gives us the equation that we should be using. It gives us our slope and the y-intercept. So while we were very close with what our slope and y-intercept should be, this gives us an even closer value. So we would want to use the equation y equals 1.143 times x plus 30.281 when I round to three decimal places. So let's put it all together in a final example. Gasoline consumption in the U.S. has been increasing steadily. Consumption data from 1994 to 2004 is shown in the table. Determine if the trend is linear and if so, find a model for the data. Use the model to predict the consumption in 2008. Is this interpolation or extrapolation? So I'm going to utilize the number of years since 2000 and I mean 1994 um, as my x value. So I'm going to say that this is going to be year 0, year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Thus, when I think about 2008, that's going to be uh, 14, right, if we were to add four more years on. But what I'm given then is our x value is the year since 1994, and our y value is consumption in billions of gallons. And notice I didn't change anything, I just left it. I know that it's going to be billions of gallons. Notice I did have to change um, my scale. So my x values went from 0 to 20, kind of looking at what my x values are themselves. And I used my y values all the way up from 0 to about 200, so I could really get a great picture for this. All right, I then utilized on my next line, you can't see, I took a screenshot and put it off to the right. I did y sub 1 is about equal to mx sub 1 plus b. This does give us a strong linear positive relationship because it's very, it's even closer to one than the last example, and it's positive. So positive, strong, linear relationship. Notice it gives me my parameters, what y equals mx plus b. So our equation is going to be y equals going to um, two, uh, three decimal places, unless it tells us otherwise, 210x. Oh, I should do two. We'll do two, 209, excuse me. 113318 there. All right. Uh, we're specifically looking at then looking for 2008. Make a prediction for 2008. Well, x is equal to 14 for the year 2008. Since 2008 is 14 um, years after 1994, this is extrapolation. 
since it's outside of the domain, our domain in this case only was from 0 to 10. And when I substitute 14 in, and have a calculator help me out here, we will get approximately 144.245 billions of gallons. I can also use decimals to help me by in another line, so this was line two, uh, our table was line one. If I were to put a line three in, and say x equals 14, notice it pops up this purple line, and I found where they intersected. So x, uh, again, represents years since 2000 and, uh, excuse me, since 1994. And our y value is billions of gallons. Notice it tells me that at 14 years past 1994, it intersects at 144.245 billions of gallons.